Shalom, this is Les Lawrence with Elisha Vision and coming to you again on Issachar Forum. It is uh, Sunday, June 10th. I know the date well because tomorrow is the anniversary of Doreen and I getting married 45 years ago. And that's been one of the highlights of our lives, both of us. We thank the Lord for a blessing on our marriage and our family. Um, let's begin with a word of prayer. We have lots of news, of course, to talk about again. Heavenly Father, thank you for your faithfulness and your love that, that we can live as a married couple and a family to live out the love that you've already put in our hearts that comes from you. We love you because you first loved us. Thank you, Father God. In the name of Yeshua ben Yehovah. Amen. All right, we're going to look, first of all, uh, today at my blog on ElishaVision.wordpress.com. And I put one up last night, a brand new one called Lovers of Death. And there's some scriptures on this that I want to read a little bit uh, today without reading the whole blog. Uh, but it's about the fact that Hamas in the Gaza Strip uh, says just regularly, they've been saying it for years, that, that uh, they say, we're going to win because we love death and you love life, and saying that to the Israelis. And uh, that's, a, that's their statement. That's what they believe. And they really do sincerely believe that. And they really do love death. That's, it's a death culture, a death religion that they're part of with Islam. Uh, and it certainly is 180 degrees opposite of what Jesus offers to us who believe in him, the Messiah, the Judeo-Christian heritage of life, abundant life. So here's a couple of scriptures. Uh, first of all, this one from Proverbs 8, 35. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from Jehovah. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. That's quite profound. And uh, of course when we talk a lot about last day's prophecies in Psalm 83, Psalm 83 actually specifically says the reason Israel's enemy, that uh, enemy, excuse me, that confederacy that comes against Israel, the reason they want to destroy Israel is because, first of all, they hate God. They're coming against God, and uh, God says in Proverbs 8:35, uh, "All who, those who hate me love death." So it's an actual reality. That's a prof prophecy being fulfilled that they love death. Uh, I invite you to look at the blog and look at the uh, Dry Bones cartoon that I put on there that pretty well says it too as well about Hamas uh, hiding behind women and children. Uh, but a couple of verses I want to share is, uh, of course, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. In John 14. And John 10.10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That describes the enemies of God. But I have come that they might have life, and they may have it more abundantly. That's what we have offered to us through the Messiah. Yeshua. Hallelujah. And uh, so there's a quote also on there that, uh, and a link to a video where Hamas is actually on video saying that uh, we desire death like you desire life. And then uh, a couple of final scriptures. Uh, For I have no, this is God speaking, I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies, says the Lord Jehovah. Therefore turn and live. Uh, even though God will judge the wicked and destroy the wicked and evil all evil, uh, he takes no pleasure in it. That's 180 degrees different than those who love death. That's Ezekiel 18, 32. And then finally, uh, Deuteronomy 30, 19 and 20. Today I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life, that you and your descendants might live, that you may love Jehovah your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life and your length of days, and that you may dwell in the land which Jehovah swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. Hallelujah. May Israel never again be removed from their land, but live in the land that God has given to them. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, um, I'll start with a little bit of humor here. Uh, there's an ABC's news report. In fact, it's on all the news and websites today that uh, an Al-Qaeda affiliate in Somalia uh, uh, mocking a new $33 million bounty on its top leaders by, the, by President Obama and the administration. 
they put a bounty on President Obama and a bounty on Hillary Clinton. Uh, they, anyone who can capture uh, Obama will be given uh, 10 camels. And anybody who can get Clinton will be given 20 chickens. So uh, that's, <laughs> I just, uh, I guess I can't comment any further on that, but I just thought that'd be a good way to start this afternoon. And um, one thing that's happening this week is uh, Shimon Perez, the president of Israel, who's more of a figurehead, uh, the leader of Israel is actually, of course, the prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. But Shimon Perez, uh, a former prime minister, is visiting uh, uh, the U.S. this week to receive uh, a very high honor, uh, I think it's the highest civilian honor, the Medal of Freedom. Uh, President Obama will be giving it to him. Uh, not uh, The timing's not too bad for President Obama because it'll uh, help him get some more Jewish votes possibly. But the reason I bring it up is that uh, one of the things that uh, uh, Shimon Perez is going to be discussing with Obama this week is appealing to Obama to release Jonathan Pollard, who's been in prison over 25 years for spying uh, for Israel, who's our, our friends, uh, and, but the U.S. has had him in prison all this time, uh, and, and for the same level of offense that normally a spy, even from an enemy nation, would be in prison for three to four years. Yet he's been in, uh, there for 25 years and has poor health, so uh, President Sharon Perez is going to appeal as he does actually every time he talks to Obama, but perhaps in this context of the, of the uh, election, maybe Obama will finally release Pollard, and uh, I pray that that'll be the case. In the past two months, over 70,000 Israelis have signed a, a petition urging Perez to, to uh, work for that release, and, and Perez has said that he will. Uh, staying on the subject of uh, President Obama, uh, the, the Congress voted in the 90s that the U.S. Embassy should be moved to Jerusalem. Um, it's, all the United States embassies in every country of the world are in the capital city of that country, except Israel and Jerusalem. Uh, the U.S. keeps, the President keeps, uh, the, the Congress voted that it should be moved to, to Jerusalem, and it can only be uh, stopped by an executive order, a so-called security waiver, it has to be issued every six months. And so back in the Bush presidency and also now with Obama, they continue to do that every six months instead of fulfilling the law and moving our embassy to Jerusalem. And the excuse is that it's a security risk because uh, it's all the Jerusalem status is, a, is to be negotiated. Well, that's absolutely not true. Israel would never, in, in, under any circumstances, negotiate uh, Jerusalem out of the picture as their capital. Jerusalem has been the capital of Israel for over 3,000 years since David made it his capital. And uh, that is one of the non-negotiable, non non-starters. And, and the sooner the U.S. gets on board with moving our embassy to Jerusalem, the better. So be praying for that. Uh, also, some more action uh, by the U.S. against Israel. I say this, and I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, there's a major anti-terror forum uh, of uh, some, I think it's 30 nations gathering in Istanbul, Turkey, and the U.S. has excluded Israel, the one country who's been the victim of the most terrorism and has the best uh, advice to offer about how to deal with terrorism, uh, is blocked by the United States from being part of that group. Russia's going to be there, China, uh, something like 15 different uh, I guess it's 29 countries all together, and, uh, and about a third of them are Muslim countries. Uh, and so it's re just ridiculous that Israel is being blocked from that meeting. And uh, I say that to remind you of, I hope you've read uh, Eye to Eye by William Koenig, uh, a Washington uh, news correspondent that's in, uh, written this book called Eye to Eye that explains that every time the United States uh, opposes Israel in any major way, uh, the result is we have some kind of calamity hit us. Tornadoes, hurricanes, economic uh, problems, whatever. Uh, and so I just say that there's some serious things happening here uh, that should not be overlooked. And uh, it, it could lead to some problems for us. Because those who bless Israel will be blessed. Those who curse Israel will be cursed. 
And uh, it, I don't know, I'm not making that up. That's what God said in Genesis. Uh, now, turning to Syria, I want to talk a little bit about Syria. Um, there's been a lot of diplomatic uh, stuff going on kind of in the background. Of course, the U.S. administration continues its position to not get involved, uh, but except from afar. Uh, but there have been negotiations, and even Russia has offered uh, exile for Assad, the dictator of Syria, that he can actually take refuge in, in Moscow if he'd be willing to leave. Uh, and uh, that was actually a couple days ago. There's some question now whether uh, Russia may be backing away from that offer, but uh, that's one possible breakthrough in Syria. Uh, meanwhile, uh, on the ground in Syria, and by the way, that was from uh, Erut Sheva uh, report in uh, the Times of Israel also. Uh, but meanwhile, um, Debkafal reports that uh, rebels, uh, that this was actually on June 3rd. I want to just remind you of this. I talked about it at the time. But, uh, rebels against the Syrian government uh, set fighter jets and helicopters on fire at an air base near the Golan Heights, another southern part of Syria near Israel. And uh, that was from uh, a week ago, last Sunday actually. Um, maybe I didn't mention it. I might not have known it <laughs> when I recorded last week. Uh, but then uh, just today, there's a report in, in the Times of Israel today that uh, Syrian rebels have taken over an air base with missile batteries near Homs. Homs is one of the cities that that, uh, that Assad has been attacking and murdering. The, the massacre of over 100 a couple weeks ago was uh, in Hama, just a little bit north of Homs. Uh, there was, by the way, another massacre this week where uh, some say over 100 again were killed. Uh, but here's a, a victory by the rebels. They have uh, taken over this air base. Uh, the b battalion commander reportedly gave the soldiers on the air base a choice to just go home and live or join the rebellion and they chose to join the rebellion so the, not only did they take over this air base but they took over all the troops and they're now part of the rebel force and that's that's a significant uh, issue and uh, one of the reasons is they gain control of a number of surface to air missile batteries uh, they've been pretty well totally under armed compared to the Syrian army and uh, so this makes a big difference uh, also there's been reports of uh, another attack by the rebels in Damascus. So um, it's still happening and uh, of course I, I continue to say that at any point I think it, this could break into the Psalm 83 war. I think one of the last stages of Syria of Assad if he feels like he has no other cho choices he may just declare war on Israel. They, they're technically already at war with Israel but just send his troops down to invade Israel, which would kind of get, then get everybody else say, oh yeah, let's go get Israel, and maybe get him out of the pickle he's in right now. So be praying for that. Either way, Psalm 83 is destined to be fulfilled soon, I'm, I'm convinced of that. Uh, another report on Debkafal about Syria um, is that there have been reports, and I saw this in a couple other media as well, uh, there have been reports that uh, both the uh, Syrian uh, army and the rebels uh, have possibly have chemical weapons and there's even a couple of early reports that maybe they've even been used at some point uh, so it's kind of uh, important to uh, uh, pay attention to that and pray that that doesn't get involved and that would be pretty serious if that happened um, and another uh, item about Syria Israel calls for world intervention in Syria and they even offer uh, aid uh, to supply aid to, to uh, the people that are hurting there and, and uh, Vice President uh, or Vice Prime Minister Shaul Mafaz in Israel uh, in, uh, in the uh, Israel Hayom uh, news site uh, levels harsh criticism of Russia's seemingly complicit role in the Syrian uprising. Best case he says this is irresponsibility. Worst case it is a partnership in the slaughter. Uh, meanwhile Prime Minister Netanyahu also said uh, that Iran, Hezbollah are, are actively assisting Syrian regime and uh, and then he, Perez, the one who's in Washington this week, made the statement, I respect the Syrian opposition and I hope it wins. So Israel's trying to influence it but they've got to be careful they can't get too uh, involved uh, directly or they'll provoke uh, an attack. So pray that they will have wisdom from above and hear from God. I don't know what to say and 
and more importantly, what to do. Um, on the, I mentioned the Bill Koenig a minute ago, and his his uh, new site is is watch.org. Uh, I encourage you to go to that uh, site, watch.org. And uh, he has on today's uh, uh, website right now on, on his blog, it says, Netanyahu calls Iran, Syria, and Hezbollah the axis of evil. And I think that probably is an accurate update uh, uh, from the old phrase that Bush used a decade ago. Uh, right now, I think that really is where it's happening, Iran, Syria, and Hezbollah. And, uh, and then also on, uh, on this site, uh, Bill Koenig, Koenig has uh, stories about Russia. We won't oppose Assad's departure in Syria. And that is a step. If they really stick with it, that's a good thing. Now, uh, there's another controversy going on. Uh, seems like there are no, no, uh, there's no limit to how many controversies. Uh, Jesus said there'd be wars and rumors of wars, and we've talked about several of those right now. But uh, this is an interesting uh, headline from Israel Today magazine. This is an excellent site. I encourage you to go there, too. It's israeltoday.co.il. Uh, and this story is far fewer Palestinian refugees than claimed. Uh, you may be aware that the Palestinians claim that when uh, when Israel won the War of Independence in 1949, that uh, 600,000 or so, or 400,000 uh, Arabs fled, Palestinian Arabs fled uh, what became Israel, and so they're demanding a right of return, and they're claiming that that now has through through uh, their descendants has now reached four or five, even six million. Arabs should be allowed to come back. However, uh, this is <laughs> a little weird in the first place. They haven't been absorbed in any of the countries. They're still kept as refugees when the, when the uh, Arab nations could easily take them in and they could live like kings if they wanted to share some oil dollars with them. Uh, but uh, there's another way to count this. And Israel is, uh, is wanting the UN to count only the actual living survivors uh, of that refugee group that left in 1949. That would be not 6 million, but 30,000. If the UN were to adjudicate that, that Israel did have to accept those 30,000 people back into Israel, Israel could do it easily. They would gladly do it. And, oh, by the way, those people would be much happier living in Israel than in any Muslim or Arab country because the freedoms of Israel, Israel's a free uh, Western style democracy. So uh, that's something that's going on and uh, still being debated. Uh, and the same, uh, the same magazine, Israel Today magazine, has a poll that most Arabs want to live in Israel. The Palestinian Authority, the international media, and even elected Israeli Arab politicians all try to portray life for Arabs in Israel as oppressive and on par with what black Africans experienced during the apartheid in South Africa. But time and again, evidence on the ground simply does not support their theory. Uh, most telling is the publicly voiced opinion of Israeli Arabs themselves. In an annual poll conducted by Haifa University and published this week, it was again revealed that a clear majority, 68.3% of Arabs, prefer living in Israel over any country in the world. 71% of Arab respondents merely said that Israel is a good place to live, while a full 30% described Israel as a homeland. Uh, so uh, that's just that's the truth. <laughs> uh, Israel Arabs. I mean, we've talked about this in the past. That there's Arabs in the Supreme Court of Israel. There's Arabs in the Knesset. Uh, there's uh, Miss Miss Israel was an Arab two or three years ago. Uh, so what the propaganda says is just that propaganda and lies. Um, quick little comment about Egypt. Um, the Muslim Brotherhood again. Uh, has spoken out again and they're saying uh, they eye Jerusalem uh, and of course the election is coming up in just a couple weeks uh, and we need to pay attention to that but uh, the uh, the one running for the Muslim Brotherhood uh, Mercy is his name, Mohammed Mercy uh, is uh, his supporters are saying we're going to take over Jerusalem and Jerusalem will be the capital of Egypt one of them even said so uh, the beat goes on <laughs> Um, and then a little bit about the uh, virus that we've been hearing about, the Stuxnet virus, uh, and 
And then a new one called the Flame that's supposed to be 20 times more powerful than the Stuxnet virus. Uh, a couple items about this that are of interest. Uh, first of all, uh, I'll, first I'll do the second one. The Flame virus, evidently it's, they've already, it's already accomplished what they, what they set it out to do. And it actually is going to self-destruct uh, over this weekend. Uh, there's a self-destruct mechanism in the virus itself in the computers. It's supposed to wipe the computer clean of the virus and even leave no traces of it. Uh, so uh, that's, that's just kind of what's happening with that. Uh, but on the, on the claim by Obama that the U.S. is behind Stuxnet, <laughs> there's a headline in uh, Breitbart.com uh, where the headline is, Oh, no, you didn't. Mossad's agents claim Obama is lying about Stuxnet. They're saying they developed it. They got it ready to go. They offered it to the U.S. and the U.S. refused for a long time. They had to convince the U.S. to use it. But Obama thinks it sounds like a good uh, campaign uh, thing that looks like he's strong on, on uh, foreign policy. In fact, there have been several leaks coming out of the White House. Uh, usually when leaks come out, it's, it's to the detriment of the United States in some way. Well, not that this isn't. This is in a sense. But these actually, all these leaks in the last few weeks from the White House uh, that have, have violated security and put uh, people's lives at risk because of the leaks. But they all benefit the image of Obama being a strong foreign relations president. And, uh, and there's actually calls for investigations by Congress into that because it doesn't look good at all. It looks like the president or the White House, somebody in his staff is behind it. Um, so uh, one other site I want to mention, I don't mention it a lot, but it's called thereligionofpeace.com and it exposes all the, the uh, jihad uh, murders and attacks around the world every week and it actually keeps up with them, keeps a, a, a weekly report and then they have a total all the way since 9-11. Uh, and uh, in the total since 9-11 of Islamic terrorists have carried out more than 19,021 deadly terror attacks since 9-11. They've been keeping track of it all along. This past week from June 2nd to June 8th, there were 37 jihad attacks around the world. Uh, six Allahud Akbar, as they call it. 347 dead bodies and 535 critically injured this week. It's going on. We don't hear about it, but it's happening. Um, and then uh, there's an article on Jerusalem Post that I wanted to refer you to. Doreen and I heard uh, Michael Freund uh, speak at a conference by Christian Friends of Israel in 2007 in Jerusalem. And his he writes uh, regularly a column for the uh, Jerusalem Post. And I love the, uh, the name of his column uh, yesterday, or a couple of days ago, Peace Traumatic Stress Disorder. Uh, based on, uh, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Well, this is PTSD, but it's peace traumatic stress disorder. And uh, it says, uh, PA Chairman Mahmoud Abbas has consistently refused to return to talks with Israel and has repeatedly rejected Jewish states' pleas in this regard. Uh, and uh, so Michael Freund says, Israel's leaders appear to have developed a previously unheard of malady, one so acute it threatens to overwhelm both their mental faculties and common sense. It's what I refer to as peace traumatic stress disorder. Uh, and uh, it's an interesting article. I think you'd enjoy reading it. Peace traumatic stress disorder on JerusalemPost.com. And uh, one thing that's been going on this week too in Israel is that uh, there's been a controversy over some buildings that were built on illegally on property that didn't belong to Israel and and uh, Netanyahu actually uh, stood with the Supreme Court of Israel saying they had to be demolished uh, and I think it was 35 homes but he announced they would build 851 new homes in uh, in the uh, Judea and Samaria actually it's I think mostly in Samaria and uh, and so and then his comment on that is that the storm will pass over because the whole world is up in arms that Israel is authorizing more Homes to be built for Israelis to live in. What a terrible thing. Who can imagine that? <laughs> and then finally, uh, I wanted to mention that uh, th in, the, in the context of the Israeli uh, dis discoveries of incredible amounts, trillions and trillions of cubic feet of natural gas uh, in the Mediterranean off the coast of Haifa, 
Uh, one of the things they're doing, they've got to now gear up <coughs> to be able to handle that gas, to receive it on, on shore and so forth. And so the cabinet is vowing to speed up uh, the planning for the, the new plant that can receive gas. And <coughs> not, not only will it make Israel independent, energy inter independent, but it'll also give them uh, lots of natural gas to export and actually be a, a great boon economically. So hallelujah, God is still working. God is favoring Zion. Psalm 102 verse 13 says this is the, the set time to honor, to favor Zion has come. And uh, so we pray that he'll continue to do that. Thank you again for being with us at Issachar Forum. And uh, pray you'll have a good week. Heavenly Father, thank you for the time together. And I just pray, Lord, your, your peace and blessing on Israel. We know the only real peace will come from Yeshua, the Prince of Peace. Thank you, Father. And bless the, the viewers of this uh, of this YouTube broadcast as well, I pray, Lord. Let your will be done in our lives, we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. See you next week.